Now today we are basically we are going to talk about the New Age movement. Many of us might uh, kind of a misunderstanding that uh, there will be church that will call themselves New Age Church and so on, but it. It is not that because New Age is an influence, and New Age has many variants, uh, right? Just like COVID nineteen, like that it got many variants, and and also it has different uh, uh, influence in different uh, countries and different uh, uh, churches. And I think the most influential uh, uh, aspect of this New Age is found in. America and quite a number of American uh, the churches have been affected by the New Age ideas, and especially with the, the Word of Faith movement, or what we call the hyper charismatic movement. So the charismatic movement is good, but there will be the hyper, the, the extraordinary, uh, the charismatic that would adopt, and uh, the word used is syncretism, which means that they actually adopt some of the ideas of the new age and put into the church. So what I'm going to go through with you is to uh, run through some of the new age ideas. Then later on, I'll share with you uh, a few pointers. Uh, what are the ideas that have been affecting uh, the church? Yeah. Okay, so now let me go back to sharing the the slide with you. Okay. Now, in the New Age movement, uh, you want to take note of the three aspects that one is called spiritualism, another one is mentalism, and then the third one is divination. So these are the three areas that the New Age movement uh, is involved in. So in spiritualism is that there is a, the communication with spirits or ghosts from another, from the, of course, from the dark world. And we don't believe in ghosts, right? Because we, we believe that when a person uh, dies, that he either goes to uh, heaven or to hell. Uh, so what you call ghosts, most of us would understand this as familiar spirits, which means that these are evil spirits uh, that imitate uh, your loved ones or imitate you know uh, somebody who had passed away and so uh, what the purpose of imitation is to invoke worship because all fallen angels right they would love to be worshipped and so that if you start to worship your ancestor they will imitate your ancestor it could be your akong ama you know your your your, your grandparents and then uh, to the mediums they will start to talk to you. And of course, uh, they will use seances and the channeling. Uh, the channeling means that the person you can actually link to the spirit world. And then to supernatural power, if it's not a fake one, at the table would actually lift it because they will ask you to go into the into the shion and then you put your hand on the table, the table would lift. And there will be a certain physical manifestation. And so, but of course, there, there are the counterfeit one, there, there are the fake one, and then there are those that are really involved with evil spirit. And then they have out-of-body experiences. And okay, then we, we move into mentalism, which we are going to spend a little bit more time because uh, this is what... Uh, the world out there are saying that it has nothing to do with evil spirit, but it has to do with the mind. And so you find that you got this parapsychology, this ESP, uh, psycho, akinesis, uh, telepathy, and other paranormal mental abilities. So now what they are doing in New Age is always they lift up the human being to the point of that we become supernatural. And in the new age, they always want to emphasize and say that we are little gods or we are small gods. Okay. And so uh, how do you find, let, let, let's say when you're in a church and then you find that if the pastor or the church leadership perpetually emphasize on the fact that we are small gods, all right. And 
uh, misquote some of the scripture, uh, then you will find that that church has been affected by New Age. So men mentalism, this parapsychology, or we call it psi, uh, is a term given by Max uh, Dessau in German, but the famous one would be by J.B. Rind in English. And it's supposed to be, to be a scientific study of uh, the, the parapsychology. And so this is called Joseph Banks Rind, uh, is known as the father of modern parapsychology. He and his wife in the 1930s, 1940s, uh, had, had been uh, dabbling with this. Okay. And so the one of the topics will be ESP, ESP, right? So is this extrasensory uh, perception. So the supposed ability to communicate and receive knowledge and information without the use of the five senses. Now for us, we find that uh, when we are being used by God and we have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit uh, does give us input. And so we have no need the five senses because the Holy Spirit would give us through our spirit. But here in this case, is trying to tell you that it is not of the Holy Spirit, but that uh, you, your, your mind has this uh, like a supernatural ability without God and without any uh, demonic uh, um, influence that your mind should be able to get this special perception, right? So, and this also like stretch a bit further saying that your mind is able to cause things to happen. And so clairvoyant also is one of this ability, the supposed ability to see the future or to see things that other people cannot see by using quote unquote, the supernatural means. But in this case, is the human being being supernatural? So they are not acknowledging and say that it is the evil spirit or it is an angel or whatever. But in some cases, they do say that it is from an angelic spirit. Now, especially when you hear preachers or evangelists or so-called prophets who come to you and claim that they receive like healing power from angels or they receive a, a certain a teaching from angels or they receive certain fire from angels, then the alarm bell should go off uh, because we are now in the era of the Holy Spirit and it is the Holy Spirit who works with us. But those who dabble with angels, then you have to check very carefully what type of angel? For example, uh, Todd Bentley, one of the healing evangelists, claimed that he actually has angels, and uh, one of his healing angel is known as uh, Emma. All right, and so he would go to Emma, and Emma would provide that healing power. But for us, is that we we have healing power from God, and so in this. Uh, the, the clairvoyant, you find that uh, this is supposed to be an ability that's beyond physical vision and that you have a second sight or sixth sense. Or I think some people might call it the third eye too. Yeah, you can see into, see things that people cannot see. And then you have mind control and mind reading is that people who claim to have uh, psychic power of the mind to read and control another person's mind. But for us is that uh, when the Holy Spirit gives you discernment is different. So you find that in the new age, there's always the counterfeit discernment. And so in this case is to read and control other minds, yeah? And so, and this supposed ability, we always say supposed ability because we do not know whether this is uh, uh, fake or this is uh, enhanced by evil spirit. Uh, so this supposed ability is deemed to be able to influence and alter another person's thoughts and action. And then we have this called precognition. And this supposed ability is to see predetermined events of the future by 
supernatural means. So again, it is about the same thing, you know, as the ESP. And so the ability to mentally cause event to happen in the future. So now whether all these are true or not, but the people who practice them, they believe, they believe. And uh, to us is that when you are Christian, you are not supposed to be involved in all this. And then you have this psychokinesis or telekinesis, which supposed ability to control object by the power of the mind. And you find that uh, the magicians or the illusionists, they actually would do things like that, but it's not because of the power of the mind, but it's because of the slack of hand. Um, but some people claim that they have this power uh, like spoon banning or watch stopping and some other uh, ways to do to 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 excite you right they can cause item on the table to move just by focusing upon it i saw on the video one of them uh, he focused on the on the phone book and he is able to make the phone book to change to to turn the pages and then there was uh there was a guy who always wanted to bust this kind of a fakery. His name was uh, Randy or something like that. And he could do the same thing. And then later on, he explained that what he did was that he used breath, which means that he knew how to blow from the corner of his mouth to a point where he hit the page and the page would turn. Of course, uh, that is a skill that... He, so he said it got nothing to do with the mind, the power of the mind, but more so the manipulation by using breath, by using the, the wind, okay, the, the, the breath to turn the page. And then you got paraakinesis, which is called P, PK, and the supposed ability to control objects by a light physical touch. Now, the previous one is that there's no touch, okay, the, the guy just think and then the, the, the spoon will ban. But in this case, is that when you put your hand on the table or like the medium put a hand on the table, the table or very heavy kind of a table, then you find that the table will rise up. And so uh, this is by touch. So parakinesis is by touch. And uh, that you, you, you can see that this force received is unproportionate to the force exerted, which means that, that she she's just gently touch, but the heavy, table can rise up. And you got the psychometry, which is the supposed ability to able discover facts by touching facts about an event or person by touching a book, touching the clothes, touching anything of the person. All right. And then the 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 the, the medium will, will be able to say, yeah, I know where he is. Remember uh, during our some time ago, a few years ago, when the what is that airplane that got lost? Uh, MH three two zero is it? Or what that that crash? And then uh, you have the Bomo, you know, he's using his uh, special binocular and all that. And so all these are trying to invoke, you know, trying to invoke certain supernatural power to know where the plane was and where it crashed and so on and so forth. So, so some people might touch the clothes and to know where their uh, loved ones is, maybe is in the bottom of the ocean or on an island or where. So they would use this uh, psychometry. Telepathy is the supposed ability to know what is in someone's mind and to communicate with the person mentally without using words or other physical signal. And so I think uh, when we were young, we, we, we tried to do that and we failed. Uh, but this is uh, very common now and people claim to have certain power, yeah? And uh, divination now, uh, divination is the third aspect, is the practice of seeking knowledge of the future and the unknown by supernatural means. Now, absolutely, I can tell you that Christians should not be involved in this because uh, this definitely will involve with fallen angels and evil spirits. So this supposed ability to use to predict 
to foretell or to divine the future, such as in fortune uh, telling. So people actually want to go and know the future. And so I have learned of Christian who have gone to, uh, you know, ask the medium or they will ask the fortune teller, you know, the street corner, the fortune teller and all that, and to know their future. But you find that uh, if the Lord wants to reveal to you the future, he might send somebody or send the Holy Spirit to speak to you, and then somebody will come and to confirm it. But it cannot be a fortune teller that, can, that will bring, uh, you know, the information from the dark world, but that uh, prophetic will always come from the Holy Spirit. Yeah, like the time when I was called into the ministry, when that night when I say, yes, Lord, you know, and then when on Sunday I met this uh, um, Australian uh, sister and she said, what happened to you on that particular, that morning, the early morning at about 3 a.m. when I say, yes, Lord. And she said that God woke her up to pray for me because I was uh, in the crucial moment of making a decision. And I was in a crisis. That's what she said. Yeah. And so it coincided with that time. And I knew that God had to call her to confirm with me because I was having doubt whether I was really called of God. Yeah. And the palmistry, uh, also known, known as palm reading, the chiromancy or chirology, is a practice of fortune telling to the study of the palm. I think for us Chinese and also Indians, we are very... Uh, you know, we we know this quite well, especially if we come from the background where we are Pai Pai Wan, uh, we, we have uh, been worshipping different pagan gods. And also, we are definitely exposed to this. Uh, at one time, long time ago, uh, even went to a fortune teller, yeah? Uh, but of course, now you are Christian, what you need to do is you need to repent, you need to renounce, yeah? You need to renounce and you need to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. You got nothing to do with this palm reading. And so for Christian, make sure that you are not a part of this. These are all part of the New Age movement. And the crystal or mansi, which is crystal gazing, that at one time you find that crystal gazing was to help the medium to focus. But later on, uh, the medium began to say that they can actually see things in the crystal. So whatever that they see or, you know, whether it's through their trance and so on, you find that if they are really uh, effective, then certain demonic forces would be involved. And you got the katomancy, which is the tarot cards, uh, by using the card, you can uh, actually tell the fortune and so on and so forth. So this has been introduced. Uh, once a cup, they were invented and then it was being used during the 14th uh, century. So uh, this is very common. At one time I was in America and I was in a, like a fun fair. And so uh, it's called, it, yeah, it, they call it the flea market, really. And suddenly I caught the eye of a person and this lady, you know, and I felt in my spirit that this lady had evil spirit because uh, one of the ways in which Holy Spirit indicate to me about evil spirit is this feeling of what we call, ng -ng -ng. I don't know how to explain it, but this, feeling like there is this vibration. So it was at this flea market that I encountered this lady, but there was a big crowd, so I couldn't see what she was doing. But, and suddenly uh, over the crowd, she, she was a very tall woman, and she was, she was looking at me, and that moment, I felt this vibration, like that, you know. And all the time that, you know, when, when I feel something like this means that the presence of evil spirit. And so I was very curious. And so I squeezed through the crowd and I went to her stall and I saw that 
her store was actually doing the tarot cards. Yeah. And she was uh, telling fortune out of that. And also selling the cards and teaching people how to use the cards. So uh, my, my own personal experience would be that, you know, some evil spirits uh, are involved. I don't know, have you ever done this before? But this is called the Ouija board or Ouija board. But Ouija is uh, actually two, uh, two words. Uh, one is the, the French word called we, oui, we oui means yes. And then ja, ja means uh, German for yes. So it's a yes, yes bot, yeah, yes, yes bot. So it's a, it's, a, it's a combination of two words. But it's also known as spirit bot, also known as talking bot. And that uh, in Singapore at that time, the, uh, when I was in the army, my friend told me that her mother, I mean his mother, his mother was involved in this Ouija board and that she went crazy, she went crazy. And then I heard another case also is that uh, there were a group of university uh, students, they were playing this Ouija board and that they asked questions, right? And then they put their hand onto that, uh, you know, that item there, that little dish there. And then what happened is that when they asked the question to the passing spirit, you know, like ask them what is his name, then the spirit will move, okay? And there will be a little bit of a muscular movement in your, in your finger and all the other friends of yours that put your, the finger onto that item there. And then that little cup or that lit, little tumbler will start to move and form the words. And so it's called a talking board. And so most of the people were having fun and laughing and all that. But I heard that in the university in Singapore, when some of the students were playing with this, they make fun of the evil spirit. And suddenly the evil spirit got angry. And this is what, what I heard uh, that there suddenly all their, there was such a power in that room that all the windows uh, burst open. The window burst open and then the window pane all cracked, yeah, all smashed. Yeah. And so all the students were frightened, you know, they were afraid. And, and so this is not, uh, now in the West, they try to say that this is scientific, you know, this is nothing, this is just the power of the mind. But for us who are Christian, we know that this involves uh, evil spirit and there are passing spirits, yeah, passing spirit. They are willing to talk to you, willing to play with you. And so uh, me, medium actually would use this also to predict the future and so on. So for Christian, we shouldn't be doing this. Astrology, horoscope. Uh, now this is, uh, the, the, you know, it seems pretty harmless, yeah? But astrology, which means that, you know, you can look at the stars and the movement of the stars and you are able to predict your future and what you need to do uh, today. And so a horoscope is a forecast based upon astrology. Now, our own experience of casting out evil spirit from a, from a sister. Now this sister, she was a worship leader and she was also a teacher of the Sunday school. But uh, when we went to her church and then, uh, you know, when we were ministering healing, uh, this sister started to manifest demon. And so there were other sisters uh, trying to get hold of her. And so Pastor Grace went to cast out the demons. And there was a lump on her arm, on her, uh, it was on her left arm. There was a lump on her forearm. And the lump started to move. All right, as Pastor Grace began to command, uh, the lump moved up to her shoulder and crossed over to the other shoulder and go to the other arm. So we realized that, you know, anything that moved, <laughs> that must be some kind of an evil spirit. And so uh, began to, to command, yeah? And she manifested, right? She was kicking, she was punching, she was wanting to bite. And so that's why in the casting out evil spirit, you really have to open your eyes, yeah? And then after we cast out already, 
And Pastor Grace asked her, uh, you know, what is the open door? Did you go to temple? She said, no. Do you worship Kunyam and all that part time? She said, no. Do you have any other idols? She said, no. And then the Holy Spirit dropped that word horoscope into Pastor Grace's mind. And Pastor Grace said, have you been reading horoscope? And the sister said, yes, I must read horoscope every day because I read for myself, I read for my husband, I read for my children before they go to school. I always read all the horoscope to make sure that they always will be, you know, be safe and then what to avoid and then what to say, what not to say. And she got these horoscope books of each one of the family members. And it was little wonder that why she was demonized. Yeah? So I don't think that horoscope is harmless because horoscope is an open door. Now, let me put it this way, right? That what is an open door? An open door is just like your house, right? The house legally belongs to you, but because your door is unlocked, then the robbers come into your house. Now, the robber is illegal, all right? but they can overpower you because you have kept your door unlocked, yeah? And then there, there is a reason for them to be attracted to you because they have seen that door ajar and not locked. And so they will come in to overpower you. And so you'll find that Christian, though they say that we are Christian, we are protected by the Lord, but then if we live in certain disobedience, then the Lord is not obligated to protect you. Okay, so we had to live in the zone of obedience, and there is always a zone of obedience where the Lord will really bless you and, and, and keep you safe. But when you, when you are in the zone of disobedience, guess what? It's not the Lord who moves. Okay, the Lord is always there in the zone of obedience, but it's you who move from the zone of obedience into the zone of disobedience because maybe you say, Maybe I should go and see a fortune teller, maybe I should go and you know, get my palm red and so on and so forth. So you move into this obedience, then the Lord has no obligation to protect you. And so if you get demonized, that is, you know, between you and the dark forces. All right, there are supernatural or pseudo supernatural. Supernatural in new age, which means that demonic forces are really involved. Now, pseudo supernatural means no supernatural forces. They are accomplished by natural or physical or psychological means, which means that by the sleight of hand or like the magician, you know, the illusionist, they can cause the cut to appear, the cut to disappear, they can cause the death to appear and all that. So all these are by the sleight of hand and not so much by uh, demonic uh, power. So the other way is that to cause your mind to see what they want you to see. And so those of you who are, uh, you know, who are part-time magician, most probably you can tell about this more than, than I do. And we have Christians who are doing this kind of thing, but definitely not involved with demonic uh, forces. It's just illusion. Illusion means very how very quickly the hand will be faster than your eyes. Now, why do Christians get involved in New Age movement? Uh, number one is always to control their future. Okay, now you can see the, the picture there. You, you can see the Kundalini spirit at the back of this uh, woman who is doing yoga. And then, yet, yeah, there's a cross there. And so she is a Christian, but she's involved in this yoga and involved in the Kundalini spirit. And Kundalini spirit is basically from the north. It is called from the Raja Yoga or the Royal Yoga. And that this evil spirit is in the form of a snake and therefore is coiled at the base of your spine. And then when it is awakened, when it's awakened. So in New Age, they always talk about awakening. And so they talk about, you know, that there are many awakenings that you become uh, more, uh, you start to know yourself when you start to have a lot of awakening or what they call enlightenment, so that now you begin to know yourself, that you, you, you have this divine spark in you, 
And then the more you go deep into that divine spark, and you are going to know yourself. So, so when you have pastors who are teaching you about this kind of a divine spark stuff, then you know that uh, that person has been influenced by new age. And so back to the notes here is to control their future, to receive counsel and advice from spiritual sources, and also to become a small God, uh, which means that I'm divine. All right. So there's a pantheism in new age, which means that everything is God. So it can be the table, it can be the flower, it can be the cloud, it can be the mountain, it can be you, uh, that you have everything has a divine spark, everything is God. And then people are not happy with the church because in the church, they have not experienced spirituality or spiritual encounter with the Holy Spirit. So they want other forms of spirituality. And so they want to get involved in this. For example, I shared once with you about a preacher in Cambodia. He's, he is an American. Uh, before the fall of Cambodia to the communists, to Pol Pot, God sent him there to uh, spread the gospel. And so in his ministry, he had a lot of miracles and many people here, and he began to share the gospel. Then when Pol Pot came in the 1970s, this uh, preacher, he left uh, he left and he went back to America. But what happened was that after he left uh, Cambodia, he discovered that he got no more power. That when he began to minister to people in America, they were not healed. And so that in his desire to get power, he actually left Christianity and joined New Age. Yeah. Means that he no longer a preacher of the Christian faith. Uh, the gospel of Christ, he actually went into new age and began to, and became a proponent of new age. And so that is because they want power. They want power. And, 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 and they are not willing to preach the gospel even when there's no manifestation of power. But if they join us, you know, in our training, most probably they will know that we have power and authority. Okay, Christians should avoid New Age, uh, New Age uh, movement, yeah, called NAM, uh, New Age movement. So you are dealing with spiritual forces from the dark world, and that you are opening yourself out, you know, to the demonic attack. So should avoid completely, and that you are depending upon a rebellious force. Understand that uh, fallen angels are actually rebelling against God. And so they have been placed under judgment, but that day of judgment has not yet come because you find that demon talk to Jesus and say, our time is not yet. Are you coming to put us into hell before our time? Because they knew about their timing. Uh, so when Jesus come back again, then they will be cast into hell. So uh, this rebellious force will want to tempt you and draw you away from God. And then, so, and your trust in God will diminish because now you are depending upon another force, yeah? And you would also become addicted to all the lies that this uh, New Age movement would give. Uh, these demonic forces always will tell you lies, but it will entice you with all the good things. Uh, like, for example, uh, one uh, person told us that when he wanted to become more serious with God and move in the Holy Spirit, the de demon actually came and said that, I will bless you with fortune. That would you not be baptized, but that I'll bless you with fortune and that you do not move with the Holy Spirit. So that is a kind of lies, okay, that the evil spirit would give. And the very moment you get involved with New Age, you find that your Christian witness will, of course, be undermined. And also, even if you call yourself a Christian, then your doctrine and your theology will be totally different from the original one. Paul the Apostle is very, you know, very concerned about this. He said that if anyone, anyone, or even the angels that preach the gospel, that's not the original gospel, you know what? What he used is he let them be a curse. Means let them be cursed. Yeah. 
So that is how serious it is, is that if anybody preach a gospel that's deviated from the one that is found in the Bible, then the person most probably will come under a curse. So the Bible opposes any believer to be involved with New Age uh, movement because the Bible will tell you that uh, this is the verse here, Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 10 to 12. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination. Just now we, we, we read about that, right? And sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or cast spell, or who is a medium who consult the dead. Anyone who does this thing is detestable to the Lord. Can you see? The word is detestable to the Lord, which means that the Lord absolutely detests anyone involved in, in all this because these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. Why the Lord has allowed the children of Israel to come to destroy the people of Canaan is because of this. Because they actually sacrifice their sons and daughters in the fire. All right, in their offer to more like the, the, the gods that they worship, yeah? In, and, and, and what happened was that you know the history. The children of Israel, when they went to Canaan land, they were influenced by them because they didn't destroy all of them. And then the, 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 the influence of the Canaanite gods and Baal, you remember when Elijah said, choose this day whom you shall serve. You choose Yahweh or you choose Baal, right? Yeah, so this is what happened here. And nowadays you find that in our churches, we do have Christians who are involved in all of this. Some of them are still going to fortune teller, reading palm, and in fact, some of them have gone to the temple. At one time, my mom was, uh, she has already been Christian for quite a number of years, but not very devoted. And so when she was invited by someone to go to the temple in Moa. And then she actually went to the temple to pray, uh, to pray for us. She said that she went in to pray to the deity for the good health and the fortune of the whole family. Uh, when we went back uh, and then we met her and then the Lord gave us the, uh, give my wife and I, uh, Pastor Grace and I, the you know, the courage to confront her. And very gently, we, we explained to her that she had done wrong and that she heard the Lord, that these things are detestable to the Lord. And she started to cry. And she, right there and then, she confessed her sin. She renounced everything. And then, uh, you know, subsequently, she became the most devout believers and trusting in God and no longer involved in all this. But previously, you know, it's like part-time, part-time Christian and part-time. Uh, she also talked about fortune telling and so on and so forth. But now no more. So this one you have to, to understand. And then uh, the Bible says, give no regards to mediums and familiar spirit. Do not seek after them to be defiled by them. So when you go to medium or you go to uh, people who are able to get this, uh, the connection with, the ghosts and the spirit and so on, right? You can be defiled by them. And the Lord uh, is very clear. He said, I am the Lord your God. Yeah? Uh, then it also say a man or a woman who is a medium or who has fam familiar spirit shall surely be put to death. That's in Israel. Yeah, During the time of Moses, that they shall be put to death. They shall, uh, they shall stone them with stone their blood shall be upon them. So which means that anybody start to dabble in this, then the community there, in order to keep themselves pure, away from this kind of influence, they actually would destroy them. They actually would kill them. All right, it's a capital punishment for being involved in this. But of course, now we don't have this. All right, let's talk about the new age belief in the church and very quickly. Now, there is one item that every time when you hear the law of attraction, of course, the law of attraction can mean many things. But in this case, uh, when the new age kind of a teaching is the law of attraction is karma, means that what is good will attract good and what is bad will attract bad. 
Okay, so but karma has a different idea. Karma is talking about uh, because of the belief in reincarnation that yeah, you have many lives. So your previous life and you are doing good, therefore now you get uh, you know good reward. And then previous life you have done bad things and therefore now you receive bad uh, rewards. Yeah, but uh, for the new age uh, people, they talk about a lot of attraction is what is happening now in this life. All right. So you believe uh, first, first is this way. For example, five years ago, you have done something bad. And so now you are reaping the harvest. So it's like what our Bible talk about sowing and reaping. Yeah. But they have made it into an, uh, a, a, a kind of a force, uh, a kind of a uh, not connected to God, but most probably connected to their faith. Most probably uh they are linked to a certain belief, all right, a Hindu belief that there is this karma thing, yeah? Okay, so uh, they also say you believe, imagine, or visualize what you want from God, and he will make it true for you. So this law of attraction is that that once you, uh, once, once you behave good, then you can actually start to visualize what you want. For example, you want a BMW, and then you can visualize it means that you can speak it, you can claim it, you can speak it, you can claim it. So this is part of the new age uh, belief that's in the church, speak it and claim it, all right? So, so this new age belief in the church also say like, like now, for example, there is a teaching uh, that even though you are not healed, you must claim that you are healed, all right? Let's say you are blind and you can't see, but you must claim that you are you can see because you cannot claim that you are blind. If you claim that you are blind, then the word will affect your healing, you know. So that is part of the uh, new age belief here that has come into the church and that it was, it was introduced in the word of faith movement uh, that, you know, that you cannot uh, claim that uh, you have an infirmity. But Jesus always asked, you know, what, uh, like the blind man, uh, what do you want? You know, he said, I want to see. Okay, then he healed him because he, he, he said that I'm blind, but I want to see. So faith is different from this kind of a false confession, you know, that even though uh, you are not healed, you say, oh, I believe I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed, but you are not healed. So what we want you to do is that in our training is that when you are not healed, you continue to command. Right, command until you are healed. Okay, and there's nothing wrong to say that I'm still blind and nothing wrong, I still feel pain and so on. Okay, we always say that from zero to 10, uh, where, where are you? you? You know, and then uh, if you are 10, which means that you are still in pain, and zero, which means that you are in no pain. So if you are 10, you cannot tell me that, oh, I'm zero, means that I have no, no more pain because of this belief that. You know, if I were to confess pain, then I wouldn't be healed. So that is the new age uh, belief that's in the church. Uh, do not love the world or the things in the world. Uh, if anyone loves the world and the love of the Father is not in him, that's talking about the, 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 you know, the speak it and claim it kind of a thing. That our whole concern will be uh, what the Lord wants us uh, to be, becoming the person that God wants us to be, and not so much that, we are so attracted to the things of the world. Now, uh, the Lord also say, right, in the, uh, that seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. It means that what you need, God will give to you. You need a car and you need a house and all that. God will bless you. But you must seek first the kingdom of God. Then the other thing about New Age is called follow your heart. Follow your heart. So you, you hear... There's some uh, people say, just follow your heart. Or you love that girl, just follow your heart. Or you love this thing, just follow your heart. Your feelings and your emotion become the indicators of truth and divine guidance. But that is a mistake. That is not true. In Jeremiah 17, 9 says that your heart is deceitful and is wicked. All right. And then whoever trusts in his mind, his own mind is a fool. But he who walks in wisdom will be set free, delivered. So another version says, whoever trusts in his own heart. Okay. 
So this follow your heart thing, once again, is part of the new age uh, idea. And then we are mini gods, right? Uh, the idea here is that since we are children of God, we are made in the image of God, therefore we are mini gods. So we are divine. We have this divine nature. But this divine nature is in new age. So we can obtain anything we please because we are divine in nature. Okay? So uh, you find that uh, this is not true. Claiming divinity for Christian is insupportable, especially taking the rest of the Bible into account because uh, in Isaiah 37, you say God is God alone. That, that, that we are not divine, but we are made in the image of God and that we are human. And we will never be divine. Even after we die, we will never be divine. We are still human. All right? Only God is divine. Not even the angels are divine. You see the point here? So we are not mini-gods. Yeah. So that idea comes from the new age that has entered into the church. And then uh, there's this idea that we are one with the universe. And this is being taught about unity and oneness, you know, oneness with everything. And so, uh, you know, the, the green movement, the green earth movement, we are part of the earth. And so in uh, this new age idea is like that, that when you put your hand and begin to feel the earth, right? Feel, feel the sand. So you are part of the sand, okay? You are part of the earth. You are part of the world, the world. And because the world is part of the universe, so you are you are not just part of the universe, right? They actually say you are the universe. You are the universe. And so they have this idea here now. It's like one uh, woman explained to her daughter using the new age idea is this way. When you go to the beach, right? And then you, you, you have this little small pill uh, that while you are building the, the sand castle, right? So you have this little small pill. And then you will take the pail and then you scoop the ocean water, all right? And so there are many pails and then there are many ocean water in each pail. And so she says that we are like the ocean. Our spirit is like the ocean water in each pail and we are separated from each other because of the pail, all right? Because of the pail and because of this body, we are separated from each other, all right? So one day, all these pail are going to be thrown away and all the water be poured back into the ocean. And we become part of the ocean. And so we become one with the universe. We become one with the ocean. And so we become one. All of us, you know, our consciousness would not be there, but that we become a corporate consciousness that we become one and then there will be unity and there will be peace. Wow, you know, this kind of new age idea is like very chim, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but, but this, is, this is what happened here is that when, when, when you think that you are part of the universe, it's part of this pantheism. You see, pantheism believes that uh, God is in everyone, is in everything. And so a tree is God, a mountain is God, the universe is God, all people are God. So uh, when I, I believe this is what, what uh, in, in India, when they say Namaste, right? They are actually worshipping the divine spark in you or worshipping the God in you. It means I greet you, I greet the spirit, I, I, I greet that God in you, that divine spark in you. And then uh, the Bible tells us that God is God alone, right? In, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So that we are not part of God. God is a creator. We are the creature. We are the creation. So then you find Nehemiah 9, 6 says, You alone are the Lord. You make the skies and the heavens and all the stars. You make the earth and the sea and everything in them. You preserve them all and the angels of heaven worship you. So that is what we believe that there's a creator God and there are the, uh, then we have the creation. But they are not one. They are not one. All right? So... So then they also believe that all religions lead to heaven. So Ofra Winfrey believed that. She said that God is not so, you know, narrow-minded and only uh, through Jesus Christ, yeah? And so uh, all religion will lead to, to, to heaven. And so you can believe in Jesus and practice other faith 
and there are many spiritual and re religious paths to God and heaven. And so Baha'ism, Baha'ism, I think you might have heard about it, uh, is uh, they, they believe that every religion can go, whether Hinduism, Islam, Christianity. And I, I, I met the chairman of uh, Baha'ism, and uh, he is a Malaysian, and I met him, and he is a very nice man, a very, very kind man, you know, very nice man. And he told me, he said that Jesus is my Lord, too. T-O-O, -O, means that Jesus is my Lord, too. Uh, he used to tell me that Jesus is your Lord, but Jesus also is my Lord. But he added other stuff, you know. So Krishna is his Lord. Buddha also is his Lord, you know, and so on and so forth. Different, different deities are all his Lord. Yeah. So, so his, his arm is open so wide. And so some of us say that, you know, in Baha'ism or in Hinduism, the arm is open so wide, so receptive, not, not exclusive. For Christian, it's exclusive. We have only one and one alone. But theirs is, I open my arm to all kinds of gods. It sounds so, you know, amiable, right? Until the shoulder joint also dislocated already because the open arm so wide. But Jesus said, well, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So that's why uh, some people don't like Christianity is because there's only one way. It's like some people don't like me is because my home only have one address. Uh, imagine I, I, I come to you and say, oh, your house also is my house. This house is my house. No, but I only have one address. If you want to find me, you can only find me in this one address. You can see? So, so this is... This is why uh, some people misunderstand this. All right, so uh, that's it for now. And I want to open uh, this time to uh, question and answer. <laughs>